never ever come. So Rabasa, somebody give him praise in the name of Jesus. Let praise and thanksgiving flow from your heart, from your inner man, in the mighty name of Jesus. Le rosso cote pa cache che te 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 bo le sonda da 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 bo se te le de de bo sa Father we give you praise Holy Ghost we acknowledge you tonight Holy Ghost we reverence your presence here tonight in the name of Jesus Father we thank you Lord that we can gather in the house of the Lord to give you praise Father we thank you for our midweek Bible study oh God Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for House of Treasures Ministries, O oh God. Father, we thank you, O oh God, that you are good and that your mercies endure forever. Father, we come before your throne with thanksgiving in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, we enter your courts with praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord Roko Tete Come on, somebody pray. In the Holy Ghost, Sonde Mare Sota Parate de Debo Sote Bashe Kete Tararabo Mare Kete Kepa. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you all the honor. Father, we pray for a release of the move of God, a fresh wind in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you will edify us tonight. In the name of Jesus, for those that gather in Zion will go from strength to strength in the mighty name of Jesus. Every time we appear in the house of God, our lives will never remain the same. Father, thank you for newness. Father, thank you for fresh understanding, wisdom, O oh God. Father, we pray and thank you, Lord, for dominion and power in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. Come on, somebody, pray. Give him thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. Zorapa, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me draw your attention to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 10, from verse 4. The Bible says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity, into the obedience of Christ. Amen. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare is not carnal. The, the weapons of our warfare is spiritual. The weapons of our warfare is dunamis. It is powerful. And we've been taught by Apostle Felix in this house that the highest the highest weapon The highest weapon of defense is your weapon of faith. Amen. And so tonight, I want us to bring down every argument. Every argument that wrestles against your destiny in the name of Jesus. And one of those weapons that I want to specifically deal with is the spirit of poverty in the mighty name of Jesus. For where God is taking us, there's some territories that we need to take over. And we stand on the word of God. We stand on what the, the father of this house releases in this house Sunday after Sunday. In the name of Jesus, I want you to pray. I, you, you come violently against the spirit of poverty in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice. I rebuke the spirit of poverty. I resist the spirit of poverty. Any argument that is contenting in the name of Jesus for me not to take dominion, for me not to take territories in the mighty name of Jesus. I take authority over the mindset, the, the mindset of poverty 
in the name of Jesus for my highest weapon of defense is my weapon of faith in the mighty name of Jesus. Roko teke teka pa pa pa. Come on, somebody pray. Roko taka taka pa. As you are praying, you are taking territories. As you are praying, you are releasing your authority, your dominion, your power in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, somebody pray. Zora patata. Sheke le pa ra patata ta pa. Zonda ba reke tete le de 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 bosa. Rapakata. We contend with every argument. In the name of Jesus, that exalts itself against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Zorabakata. Father, we thank you tonight. Oh God, as we commit the service into your hands tonight. And Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for our men of God that will release the word of God tonight. We pray, Lord, let him speak with boldness, with power, with exousia. In the name of Jesus, with pre precision. And Father, tonight we thank you as we give over to the best choir in the world that you will touch their vocal cords as they will usher into the pre us into the presence of God. Come on, somebody. Let us celebrate Jesus. Put your hands together. Put your hands together and celebrate Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. He's a mighty God. He's worthy. He's above all. He's beyond all. And Father, we've come to bless you this evening. We've come to honor you. We've come to enthrone you. Indeed, we want to see you high and lifted up. We want to see you enthroned in our lives, oh Father. We want to see you taking over our lives. We want to see you having control over everything that concerns us. And Father, we ask that this evening be glorified, be exalted, be magnified in this place, be magnified in our hearts, oh God. For none can compare to you. None can be likened unto you, Jesus. Be enthroned, King of glory. Be enthroned, mighty one. Surround us by your glory. Surround us by your glory, ancient of days. For we want to see you. We want to see your glory enveloping us, oh God. We want to walk in the radiance of your presence. Surrounded by your glory. Feasting at your table. We want to see you face to face, oh God. Surrounded by your glory. Feasting at your table. We want to see you face, face, face to face, oh God, surrounded by your glory, feasting at your table. We want to see you face to face, oh God, we're surrounded by your Table, we want to 
Hallelujah. Somebody rejoice for Jesus.
bless the Lord. Hallelujah. There's nothing too hard for our God. Hallelujah. Can we just begin to thank Him and say, God, with you, there's nothing impossible. The Bible says with men, things may be impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. And so can we just begin to lift our hands and bless Him. That in our lives, He's the God of the impossible. There's no challenge too hard for Him. Hallelujah. Can we just begin to bless Him? We bless you, Jesus. We honor you, God. We give you praise and glory, oh God. You are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision. See things like you do, God. I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. Oh, you know what to do. You know what to do, God. Yeah. Choir, sing with me, God. I look to you.
still on the throne. He rules and reigns in the affairs of men. Uh, choir, there is this song I, I listened to while I was on my flight from uh, Dubai to South Africa. Uh, it's Emperor of the Universe by Donson. And I called Donson. You know, I called him today. He didn't answer my phone. Maybe he's in a meeting. I'm hoping that I will get hold of him, you know. Let me see if I can pull him for Excel. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's worth trying. Amen. That song really blessed me. Can you guys pull it off on Sunday? Come on now. You're looking at me like I'm talking to another person. <laughs> All right. Eh? <laughs> Pastor Nobet said he would do it now. You know, uh, there's an adage in my place in, from where I'm from. My father used to tell us. He says, you know, as much as a, a bird wants to die, he doesn't want the one that they shoot with sling. Uh, as much as I want that song. Mm. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Praise God. All right, let's welcome our online viewers. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Please can we put our hands together for them. Amen. We are watching. We see you. We know you are watching us. Amen. From wherever you are all over the world. God bless you. Thank you for joining. If you were in Johannesburg, though, or if you are in Johannesburg, we, it would have been better if you were here. Okay, so next Wednesday, make your way here. All right. Praise God forevermore. All right. Our Excel conference is around the corner. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to have, uh, I think it's a seven days fast that we do for Excel Conference. Amen. So prepare for it. I think the date will be given to us on Sunday. Our guest speakers are ready. The word is ready. We are ready to hear the word and be changed and transformed, be healed, delivered, set free, blessed, prospered in every area of our lives. Say amen to that. All right. The gathering of God's people is always an amazing thing. The Bible says 
that unto God is the gathering of his people. And our conferences have become, uh, you know, um, a, a world of attraction for quite a number of people. People prepare for our conferences. Some people are already calling. I mean, I, we had uh, pastors calling from Uganda to ask for invitation letters so they can get their visas because they want to be here. Amen, somebody. All right, so please make sure you avail yourself for the conference. Amen. And then we're going to have morning sessions for leaders, captains of industry, and people in ministry. If you are, if you, are you know, a businessman, you're leading a business, you are in ministry as a minister of the gospel, it is for you. It's morning session. It's going to be amazing. We are tapping into one of the men that I, uh, I invited, um, Pastor Charles Osazua. He's a businessman. He owns so many, quite a number of oil wells in Nigeria. So the guy is doing very well. Marketplace, and um, they come in with all these graces. Amen, somebody. He was preaching in a conference where him and I were guest speakers. And he said one of his staff earns $40,000. One of his what? Mm. Yeah. Not him. Hallelujah. If you can pay somebody $40,000, there is something you know. Uh -uh, you are not hearing me here. All right, okay. Who wants to pay a star $40,000? That's your portion in Jesus' name. Yeah. You need to get there. You know, uh, Father, bless me, bless me. We, you must get to a point where you are a blessing to others. Your business will be feeding 5,000 people. Uh, you're not saying amen to that. Yeah, church, this is kingdom. This is kingdom. It's not just, you know, besides, yes, part of uh, our mandate as God's people is that we are to make sure that all men get saved. You know, Bible says that God not willing that any should perish, but that how many? All should come to repentance. But also beyond that, it wants us to go beyond our, our, the people getting saved, that the territory is also saved. Say amen to somebody that the territory is saved, that we as God's people begin to take ownership of what belongs to our Father. The last time I read the Bible, the Bible said the earth is who? Come on, talk to me. The earth is who? And what else? The fullness thereof. The word and day that dwell therein belongs to who? To God. So it's time that we need to begin to possess and manage the affairs of our Father. And your amen is so weak. Amen. All right. Well, I have a very strange message I'm going to preach to you tonight. Um, I was telling my wife uh, last night I woke up and I began to pray as my custom is to just get a word from the Lord. And, and I, I'm laying on the bed pray, praying in tongues. An hour gone, two hours gone. As I was going to the third hour, I heard these words, men like Moses. I'm like, what is that? Lord, what is men like Moses? And so I went into the scripture and began to study Moses. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. Are you interested? Yes, You're going to be blessed. Amen. At the end of this meeting, we will pray. Amen. God will raise you in this year. Hallelujah. Who is ready for giant strides? Ah, please get ready. Get ready to do great things for God. Oh, it shall be said of you, what you have done, no man has ever done. Uh -uh, your amen. I say, what you have achieved, no man has ever achieved. What you've conquered, no man has conquered. That shall be your portion. If you receive it, shout a loud amen. amen. All right, quickly, let's go to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. From Sunday, we're going to begin to announce um, the home cell areas. And, um, you know, leaders will be calling you. We'll give your name to leaders. So if Somebody calls you from church and say, we are in your area. We are the home cell leader. Please make sure that you adhere to them. We want to be accountable um, to, for people in the church. We realize now the church is growing, and the leadership of the church cannot just be managed from the pulpit. We have to have small groups where people know each other, even to their homes. Say amen to that. That was the way of the acts of the apostles. The Bible said they were gathering from house to house, breaking bread, you know, and fellowshipping with one another. 
and the Lord kept adding to the church. What did praising God and God kept doing what? Adding to the church. We need that fellowship. Amen. The days are evil. We need one another. Somebody say amen. amen. It was interesting to know on Sunday that somebody has been in hospital for three months. And they only told, she came after service to see me. And I mean, nobody knew. I didn't know nobody. So we, we need more accountability than that. Are we together, church? So there are certain home cell leaders that have been appointed for different areas. If they give you a call, make sure that you answer them and be part of that fellowship. Amen, somebody. Be part of that fellowship. Very soon, as the church grows, I may not be available to see everyone. You may have to see me through your home cell leader. So if you call to make appointment to see me, they will ask you which home cell do you belong. If you don't belong to one, you'll be forced to join one. Don't wait to be forced. You know, God, God is a... He wants us to do things willingly. Amen. Do it what? Don't be forced to serve God. Just do it willingly. Praise God. All right. Matthew chapter 17. Let's read from verse 1 to 13. Matthew 17 from verse 1 to 13. And then we'll start. I know the story I'm about to read really doesn't look anything like Moses, but um, I'm just taking a cue on how the Holy Spirit gave it to me. And after six days, Jesus take it who? Come on, are you here? Look at your neighbor, say, wake up. Mm, all right, let's try one more time. After six days, Jesus take it who? Who else? And who else? His brother and bring them up into where? A high mountain. Next verse. Why is my screen not on? Next verse. And what happened to him? He was what? Transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun. I think this was what caught my attention. And his raiment was white as the light. Behold, there appeared unto him who? Moses and who else? Elijah, talking with him. All right. And then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou will, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Next verse. And while he yet spake, behold, a bright light, or cloud overshadowed them, and a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. What do you do to him? Hear ye him. Next verse. And when the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were so afraid. Next verse. Come on. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. Next verse. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man, save Jesus only. They lifted up their eyes. So I had to go read this in the Luke's account. So the Luke's account says that they were asleep. They were heavy with sleep in Luke chapter 9. If you can maybe find it for us and just give us that scripture. It says, as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them saying, tell the vision to who? Come on, talk to me to who? To no man until the Son of Man is be risen again from the dead. Next verse. And his disciples ask him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? Jesus answers and says unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. Next verse. But I say unto you that Elias is come when? Already. And they knew him not. But I've done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall the Son of Man suffer. What? Suffer. And then the disciples understood that he speak unto them. Of who? John the Baptist. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, speak to us tonight. Speak clearly. Lord, speak that we may understand. Dissolve doubts and mysteries. Unfold your word to us, O God. Let everyone's light be switched on today. Let every blindness in our minds be removed by the power of your word and the power of light. 
Thank you, Lord, for revelation. Thank you for blessing us tonight in Jesus' name. And the church say, Amen. All right. Um, this was the story of three men that were chosen by his disciple, by Jesus. Um, out of all his disciples, he chose three. Who did he choose? Peter, who else? James, and who else? John. He chose these three people. I mean, out of everybody, out of three among, well, out of the 12 disciples, well, I'm sure we can include the 70, we can include the 500, um, whichever numbers you have in the Bible of people that were followers and disciples of Jesus. Um, and then out of everybody on planet Earth, he chooses three people to go with him for an encounter. Are you here? But the Bible says when they got there, these people were fast asleep. And how I know that is the Bible says when they looked up, they only saw Jesus. That means they were not partakers of this whole transaction. Um, church, it's important that, you know, when you you come before God, you pay attention. Many of us, we, we, we come to church, we are distracted. The devil has a way of taking your attention from what God wants you to hear. Say amen, somebody. I want you to know that when you come to an environment like this, God is speaking. And God will speak to you tonight. God will give you solutions to issues in your life. God will speak to you about things that will affect generations to come. Amen. Say amen to that. And so, um, it, it's amazing that, you know, these people were involved in this whole transaction, but only Jesus had this encounter of transfiguration. I would expect that if you go with me to the mountain of transfiguration, I should also be transfigured. Uh -uh, you are not here. I can't come to church with somebody and we are all here. I am sick, you are sick, God forbid. And then you get healed, I live sick. Somebody shout, God forbid. Are you here, church, tonight? Uh, we, we should have the same encounter. The Bible said they were gathered and while the, Jesus was praying, they appeared unto him Moses and Elijah. And these two people began to discuss issue that even the devil should not know. These, these are critical information, classified information, like the FBI we say. Classified. How do I know it's classified? When they left that mountain, Jesus said to them, tell nobody. This thing that you have seen, nobody must know. Because let me tell you, let me tell you why. You see, as I was meditating, I realized that that whole transaction was Moses and Elijah telling him about his death and his purpose. Because at this point, Jesus was already becoming very discouraged. You know, he had prayed prayer like, Lord, if it be possible, let this cup pass. You, you all know that prayer? Let this cup pass from me. So he was already between two opinions. Should I die? Should I not die? And so they had to come and let him know that, hey, boy, this is the reason why you are here. You cannot fail us. We, the cloud of witnesses or the 24 elders and, and the host of heaven, you cannot fail us in your purpose. So, at this point, Satan did not know that Jesus was going to die. You are not here. The only thing, look, Satan knew that Jesus is the son of God because he took him to the high mountain in Matthew chapter 4. You all remember that story? And Luke chapter 4. And he said to him, if thou be the son of God. So he knows that this is the son of God. But what he did not know is that Jesus was going to die and through his death, he was going to recover what Adam stole, what Adam lost to Satan. He didn't know that part. And that's why it was a shocker for them. When Jesus died and was buried, listen, the Bible says had he known, he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Crucified. The season we are in now is the season of crucifixion. 
If he had not listened to me, when he saw Jesus, he saw him as a man. A man that was God in the flesh. But little he did, he did he know that Jesus was going to die and through that death and resurrection was the means for him to collect the, everything that Adam lost through high treason. Say amen to that. So now when Adam, when sorry, when Jesus died and they were all rejoicing in hell, having a party, and they were dancing, why true kucha, why true kucha? <laughs> all the demons were in a party, drinking whiskey, and say we got him. We killed the son of God. All of a sudden, somebody shows up in hell with so much power and authority take Satan in front of his demons drag him around hell grab the keys of hell and death and disappear from hell and when he left Satan like what happened how did we lose this <laughs> it was the means so this was what Jesus told them don't tell anybody don't let anyone know what you saw. What you saw here, don't even say it anywhere until I'm risen. And so, I, um, why I brought the story in was not really for Jesus and his disciples. But at the fact that in this whole transaction, the Bible says that when Jesus, after six days, uh, he taken Peter, James, and John, and bringing them up to a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured. Somebody say he was transfigured. And his face did shine. Somebody say his face did shine. So, you know, the, the fact that his face shone was what now attracted my attention in this scripture to talk about the man I want to talk about today, which is the man Moses. Somebody say man like Moses. Look at your neighbor say, men like Moses. And so, uh, Moses had a similar experience. Now, it's amazing that three people were invited and were not transfigured. Oh God, may you be a partaker of what God is doing in the hour. <laughs> may God not be moving and you are not a part of it. Hey. I think it was somebody that sang Lord whatever you do in in the season what don't do it without me don't do it let let I shouldn't be taken unawares by what heaven wants to do in South Africa uh -uh, you are not hearing me these three people were not transfigured now you go to Exodus chapter 34. Three powerful men were invited by Jesus to the mountain. <laughs> and nothing changed in their life. But another guy was invited. Meanwhile, they were invited for a few, I don't know how long that whole Jesus' transfiguration was. But I don't think it was more than one day. But here is another man who was given the same invitation to the mountain. And he was there 40 days and never slept. <laughs> oh, you are not here. Let's, let's start reading from Exodus chapter 34 verse 1. Give it to us. And the Lord said unto Moses, You need two tables of stone like the first, like unto the first. And I will write upon those, these tables the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest. You all remember that story? Yes, yes. And be ready in the morning and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai and present yourself there to me in the top of the mountain. Keep going. And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mountain. Neither let the flocks nor the herd feed before the mountain. Keep going. And he hewn two tables of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went up unto Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him. And he took in his hands two tables of stone. Next verse. And the Lord descended in the cloud. The same way. 
The Bible said that when Moses appeared, Moses and Elijah appeared to Jesus, a cloud of glory was all over the mountain. The same process. All right. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord, Nezres. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth. Next verse. Keeping mercy for how, how long? Thousands. Forgiving, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin that we by no means clear the guilty. Visiting the iniquity of fathers upon their children and upon the children's children unto the third and the fourth generation. Next verse. And Moses made haste and bowed his head towards the earth and worshipped. Next verse. And he said, if I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us. For it is a stiff-necked people. May you not be a stiff-necked pe person. I say, may you not be a stiff-necked person. He says, and pardon our iniquity and our sins. Here he's pleading for the children of Israel. And take us... Uh, for thine inheritance. Next verse. And he said, Behold, I will make a covenant before all thy people and I will do marvels. May God do marvels through you this year. Uh -uh, you are not saying amen. May God do marvels through you and through your life this year. Say amen like you are serious. He says, Such as have not been done in all the earth. Church, God still wants to do things that nobody has done in the earth. He just needs a man that believes. He needs a woman that believes. Somebody shout men like Moses. Say it like you are serious, men like Moses. He says, nor in any nation, uh, nor in among, uh, and, and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord. For it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Mm. God, do it with me, Lord. Ah! Do it with me. Somebody pray that prayer in one minute. Father, do it with me. Do marvels with me. In this year, 2024, do wonders with me. Do what men have never done before. Do it with me, oh God. Are you praying? Don't keep quiet. Father, do wonders, do marvels with me in 2024. Something that others have never done. It's things that others have never seen. Do it with my life in the name of Jesus. Say amen to that. All right. The Bible says, Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I will drive out before you the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. These are all six demonic princes or principals that always hinder God's people from taking their possession. There is a spirit of Jebusites. Are you here, church? There's a Malachite spirit. These are spirits that hinder God's people from taking their possession. He said, take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. Next verse. But you shall destroy their altars, break their images, cut down their groups. Say, Amen. Look at your neighbor say, destroy the altars in your father's house. Yeah. Destroy them. All these altars that have been built for years. There are some of you that altars are still running rampages in your life. Including you that's a Christian. Your father failed or your grandfather died of a disease or died of something. Or something happened to him in a way or a pattern. You saw it from your grandfather to your father, and now you are going through the same process. Somebody said, destroy that altar. God never wants a negative altar to run in your life as a child of God. And therefore, every altar that is running from the pit of hell, running haywire in your life, I terminate the appointment. I said, I terminate their power. I destroy their effects in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, say amen to that. He said, for thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is what? Jealous. Somebody say, God is a jealous God. 
Oh, say it like you mean it. God is a what? He's a jealous God. So be careful that you don't have anything that takes the place of God in your life. Some of you, your cell phone has become your God. When you wake up in the morning, instead of praying, you go to your cell phone. Oh, okay. Oh, he went so quiet in this Catholic church this evening. Ah, yeah. All right. For God is a jealous God. Next verse. Keep going. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a warring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice. He said, don't marry them. Be not unequally yoked with who? Or no sister said it. I'm watching you single sisters. You know God told me that many of you are dating unbelievers. And he's not lying. And I know. Many of you, all this one, you are coming here doing holy. Holy story. When you live here, I know who you are going to. Are you Lord God of oh my <laughs> story? Story. Hmm. Story, story. Hmm. Yeah. He said, don't enter into covenant with them. Don't. Don't find yourself marrying a non-believer. Uh-uh. Say amen, church. Don't join them in their idol worship. You go home and they tell you you have to put some wire on your waist for protection. Don't join them. Uh, but it's my mother that says so. Don't join her. Listen, as soon as you got born again, you are disconnected from that lineage. Your new lineage is Jesus. Say amen like you are serious. I can't get to a point now where I go home and they want me to worship something because that is what my family has been doing. Never. No. I remember when my mother died and they told me that the tradition was that I need to be bare-chested, tie a wrapper and go with, because I'm the firstborn, I will go with the ambulance from the hospital. I'll be walking behind the ambulance with all the crowd back to our house, bare-chested. I say, Mina, <laughs> you have met your match. I remember the king of our town came to visit us. I will never forget all these things. So when he comes, everybody lies prostrate and he touches you with his scepter on your head. I got there, I greeted him, good afternoon, sir. He didn't answer me. Because there is a way you greet him. I don't know what you're carrying in your hand to touch my head. I am a born again Christian. Then you finish touching me, I come back to South Africa, everything in my life goes upside down. I, you are not hearing me, church. Be careful how you enter into some of this covenant. That your mother is doing it doesn't mean you should. Uh -uh. Where is your amen today? What is wrong with Christians? This is what we are doing. We go back every Christmas holiday. People come back with demons to my office. Father, daddy, deliver me. This one happened. I am this, I am that. Because you've gone to do what you're not supposed to do. Somebody in this church sent her, the, the son to some mountain to go and do something they do. The boy came back crazy. You all remember that boy? He was in the youth. Came back crazy. I don't know what they did. I know his culture. I know many of you did it. But him, he did it and never succeeded. We have to start delivering him from madness. You know, I said that one time and one Tulsa guy left the church. He said, this man is so ignorant. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's not... Uh, don't, if you go, don't come to my office. That's all I'm saying. Amen. Whatever you carry, carry it on your own. Because I'm tired of taking on assignment that God didn't give me. Are you here, church? Go and be sleeping with an unbeliever. Sleep with a crazy dude that has joined cult. And you, you know how many men now that it is true sleeping with women that they get power for wealth. Uh, you're not here. That's how they collect your destiny. 
It is true that there is so many methods now Satan is using to put, get people into covenants that they don't know. Sleep with a man and then you find yourself in a web. A web you don't know. It was a brother that said he slept with a woman and after he slept with this woman, he started finding himself underwater in meetings. A marine spirit was transferred. But you will not hear. You will not hear. Keep your body. Look at your neighbor say, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And something is wrong with our generation. Something needs to be fixed quickly. Particularly with us Christians. You can hardly find a genuine Christian who is not messing around with sex as an adult. Gen I'm talking genuine Christian. In, I'm not saying in the world, though, in the church. In the church. Married men are messing around. Single people are messing around. Married women are messing around. Single women are messing around. In the church. Look at your neighbor say it needs to stop. Yeah. All right. Let's keep going. Thou shalt take of their, of their daughters and unto thy sons, and their daughters go a warring after their gods, and make thy sons go a warring after their god. He said, look at what you do when you intermingle yourself and begin to date somebody who's not a believer. He said, thou shalt make thee no molten gods. Next verse. The feast of the unleavened bread. Maybe let me just go straight to my scripture. I think give me, um, uh, let me see. Let me just go to Exodus. Where, where are we? Exodus chapter 34. Let me, instead of reading all the scriptures, let me go straight to what I want to uh, share with us. Exodus 34 and verse 28. Let's go to verse 28. Because I really have a lot to share that I need to. But 28 says, and he was there with the Lord for how many days? How many days was, we with, was he with God? 40 days and 40 nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water, drank water or drank water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant of the Ten Commandments. Say amen to that. He wrote what? The words of the Ten Those are the, That's the five books of Moses. The five books of Moses. Somebody was, three people were invited to a mountain and came out empty-handed, no transfiguration. Another person was invited to the mountain, came back with five books that we are reading today called the Torah. Five books. Now, church, let me tell you. Do you know that with Moses' five books, many nations, I'm talking civilized nations, Modern nations have built their values through the laws of Moses. The laws of many nations are from the laws of Moses. Somebody who had an encounter went before God on a mountain, came back with something. You are coming out from this service with something. You cannot be coming here day in, day out and live the same way you came. Uh -uh, that's not right. Came back with five books that today has been, I mean, to the point where even when Moses was with God, he said to God, show me your glory. In Exodus 33, he said, show me your glory. And God said, listen, I will pass by you and show you my hinder part. Because no man will see my face and leave. If you see my face, you will die. So the Bible said, God covered Moses with Yagaba. God used his hand, covered Moses' face and walked past him. Somebody shall men like Moses. Walk past him and the Bible says he saw the back part of God. Now that back part is Genesis. Moses was not there when in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. God took him back to beginning, to creation when he saw the back of God. That's when he wrote the book of Genesis. How did Moses know that the earth was without form and void? It was not there. But when God revealed his back part, Moses 
have a revelation of how creation began. Yeah. Jesus Christ. He saw beginning of creation. And that's how he could write about, uh, about creation, write about Adam. He was not there when Adam and Eve were created. He was not. But he saw it because he was spending time with God. So somebody else is spending time with God, leaves the mountain empty-handed. They are even, when they woke up, they didn't see Moses and Elijah anymore. Another person goes to the mountain, comes back with five books that I'm preaching about almost 7,000 years later. Do you see the difference why all of us are in different levels in church? Because what somebody else is seeing, another person is joking with. Uh -uh, you are not here. I say what somebody else is seeing, somebody else is what? Joking with. So God took this man and showed him all these things. And he saw all this revelation and wrote them down, pinned them down. That's why church, you know, I, I say to you every day, when you come to church, bring, there are three things I told you to bring. Name them, number one. Your Bible, number two, what else? A notebook and pen, number three, an offering. Don't come to church without these three things. Because while I'm talking, God is saying something. Listen, God can give you an idea while I'm speaking. Those of you who were here when Pastor Colin used to be here, Pastor Colin has shared on this pulpit that all the songs he wrote in this church, he wrote them while I was preaching. As I was preaching, God is giving him revelation of songs. While I'm preaching, you are not paying attention. You are thinking of your chicken in the microwave because you fasted today. And that's all you live with. You live with chicken. You will not live with chicken today. I pray you will not live with chicken on your mind. Say amen. My God. So, this man wrote all this. Now, Look at how God used this man, Moses. The man that was able to capture God on the mountain. The Bible speaks about this guy who was born in the land of Egypt at a time when God, when, sorry, when Pharaoh um, had, was jealous of the children of Israel and their increase and abundance. The Bible said that the Pharaoh that knew Moses had died. And here he was, he came into office and saw this set of Jews living in Goshen. But these guys had multiplied exceedingly. They were prospering. They were doing so well. And the Bible says, he now called a council meeting, called a meeting in the parliament. And said, guys, we have this set of boys or people who are living with us. The way they are growing and increasing is dangerous for us. Paradventure, we have enemies that will attack us and they join our enemies, we are finished. Now, let us deal with them wisely. And the Bible said they began to afflict them. And as they were afflicting them, this, do, this dude went to all the Goshen General Hospital, uh, Goshen City General Hospital, and said to them, listen, all you nurses in Goshen, if any Hebrew woman comes here to give birth and she has a boy, what do you do to the boy? Kill the boy child. But if he's a woman, leave the woman. And that is still the strategy of Satan today. That's why many of our men are in prison. It's the same strategy. Useless the men. Useless the men. Every day now, today in our nation, they're talking about women empowerment. There is no man empowerment. Keep the men useless. Let them be under control by their wives. Okay, you won't say amen. Are you here? I'm not against women prospering. But as you are empowering women, empower men. There's no point having a, a useless man as a husband. Hello? It's as good as not being married. Oh. I perceive some are dating useless men. Oh, Jesus. I made a mistake by what I said. Hallelujah. Church is the same strategy. And so the Bible said that Satan, uh, Pharaoh, commanded them to kill the men. And at this point, Moses was born, and the mother couldn't hide Moses anymore, went and put him in the brink of water 
of the river made a, a basket of bulrush and went and dropped Moses there. And Pharaoh's daughter came to take a bath and saw Moses crying. Miriam, the sister, was around. And while she got the child, Miriam suggested to her, should I call one of the Hebrew women? Because she saw that the child was a Hebrew child. And then eventually called the mother. The mother took the boy and raised him until he was a teenager and took Moses back to the palace and gave him to Pharaoh's daughter. And he became the son of who? The son of who? You are not here. The son of who? Pharaoh's daughter. So Moses grew up in the palace. And then eventually one day came, he went to visit his brothers that were working for the Egyptians. When he got there, he saw an Egyptian fighting uh, a, a Hebrew man. And he killed the Egyptian, buried him in the sand. Next day, went back to see his brothers. He knew where he was from. May you not lose your identity. Church, anywhere you are, if you are in a boardroom, know that you are born again. They can't be drinking whiskey and you are drinking whiskey. Okay, let me talk to this side. They can't be partying and smoking and drinking in the office and you are doing the same. You are a Hebrew boy. You are a Hebrew girl. Can I hear a name and somebody? They go for smoke break. You go for smoke break. No, you are not the same. Don't join them. Moses, even though he grew up in the palace, knew that he was a Hebrew. And he would go at often time to go and visit his people. He would go and visit them. And the second day when he went out, he saw two Hebrew men fighting and he, he wanted to separate them. And one of them said to him, who made you a deliverer over us? At this point, everybody knew he was a deliverer. His calling was already beginning to find expression. Who made you a deliverer over us? Do you want to kill me like you killed the Egyptians? So he already knew his call. That's why he killed the Egyptian. He knew his call. Do you know your purpose? Do you know why you are here? Do you think you are here to work for some net bank APSA to make money? No, you have a purpose. Beside that job you go to every morning, you have what? A purpose. May you find your purpose in Jesus' name. I said, may you find your purpose in Jesus' name. So Moses took off and went to the wilderness. It was while he was in the wilderness that God appeared to him in a burning bush and God began to speak to him God him and God had a transaction oh they that do know their God <laughs> when God showed up he said listen I've heard the affliction of my I've seen the affliction of my people I've heard their cry and I've come down to deliver them he said but I'm sending you Moses began to give excuses he said if you if I go who will I tell them that has sent me he said, tell them, I am that I am. May you have an encounter with I am that I am. You know, you, know, you must know God for yourself. We don't know the God of Apostle Felix. Know your God. There is something about knowing God that puts you on a pedestal that others are not. Can I hear a name? Man? There is something about having an encounter with God. Being transfigured in his presence. There is something about having transfiguration experience. You don't live like others. You don't lie like others. You don't cheat like others. You don't smoke like others. You don't drink like others. You don't sleep like others. Can I hear an amen? A transfiguration experience. When people see you, they will know this one has been with Jesus. The Bible said they call them Christians because they see that they can perceive that they have been with Jesus. And so this man now God said to him, I'm going to send you back. He said, but these people won't believe me. If I go to the elders of Israel and tell them that God has sent me, who will I tell? He said, tell them I am that I am. I am has sent you. Somebody shout, I am. Amen. Say it like you are serious, I am. Amen. He says, tell them that I am has sent you. He has sent you to go and bring them out. And then the Bible said Moses began to question God again. I'm a stammerer. He said, okay, no problem. I've appointed Aaron as your spokesman. <laughs> and he went further. God said to him, okay, if you're still doubting, what is in your hand? He said, a rod or a stick. He said, put it down. Put it down, it turned to snake. Church, that's why, see, there is something encounter does to you. The reason why we have many people in church who don't know whether they are Christians is lack of encounter. 
The day you see Jesus, your everything in your life, it will change. This thing we are begging you to be on fire. You will, nobody will beg you. You will wake up on fire. You will go to work on fire. You will be at work on fire. You will return from work on fire. You will be sleeping on fire. Can I hear an amen, somebody? It's something about the encounter with Jesus. Moses took the rod and he turned back to snake. He, he, turned to, he dropped the rod, he turned to snake. He, God said to him, catch it by the tail. And he turned to rod. And he said, now go to Egypt with this rod and do signs and wonders. Church, let me share with you some of the things God did with Moses. Somebody shout, men like Moses. Are you here, church? Somebody shout, men like Moses. Exodus chapter 7 and verse 1. Exodus 7 and verse 1. My God. Exodus and verse 1. And the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made you a God unto the president of South Africa. <laughs> you didn't hear that. Somebody didn't even say amen. You are not sure. He said, I've made you what? Let me tell you, God can make you a God to the president. A God unto Pharaoh. I didn't make you a, a friend, a mate. I made you a... Meaning that the moment Moses shows up in front of Pharaoh, it is a God standing in front of Pharaoh. I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. And Aaron, thy brother, shall be your prophet. Go to verses 8. Verse 8. The Bible says, verse 8. Just walk with me, please, media team. And the Lord spake unto Moses and said, and Aaron... Saying, next verse, come on, come on, come on. When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, show me a miracle for, show a miracle for you, then thou shalt say unto Aaron, take thy rod, cast it before Pharaoh, and he shall become what? A serpent, just like he had experience with God when they were alone. Please never go to public to display something you have not displayed before God alone. <laughs> you know, that is one of the problems with many pastors on the pulpit. They want to come to the pulpit and, and you know, Apostle Felix, when he's preaching, people are falling all over the place. Uh -uh. It takes, you have to, you and God have to transact at a certain level. You are not hearing me here. You and God have to transact at a certain level for you to stand on the pulpit and this power will be released. People are falling all over the place. You guys have been with me around when I go preach. The people vibrating like fire came on them. You can't do that. See, please, never try to display something you and God have not displayed in secret. Don't do it in public. You will disgrace yourself. Please. That's why you must spend time with God to gain your own experience. Spend time with your God. Know him. I will tell you that a witch, no witch can stand in front of me and say, hey, you, you are dead. What? Yesterday I was doing counseling. A young lady walked into my office. And as she was talking, she says, We're not, she's sitting on her own. I'm sitting in front of her. I'm watching her. We're not going to let her go. We have held her life. A man's voice. He stopped. I'm <laughs> he said, you think you're into my office. She took off. She I said, hey, come back here. I closed the door. You are not going anywhere. <laughs> movie in my office. Somebody shall movie. Put my hand on, I say in the name of Jesus, you foul spirit, get out! <laughs> on the floor. You, uh, don't, please, don't be like the seven sons of Skiva. <laughs> uh, you know, you get to work, you hear a woman, hey, who are you? You say, Apostle Phyllis did it yesterday. <laughs> we will come and receive you without clothes. <laughs> Have you, you know seven sons of Skiva? <laughs> Their father was a pastor. They said, we adjure you by Jesus, the name of Jesus whom Paul preached. Come out of him. <laughs> the demon looked at them and said, Kai, oh, shame. Have you heard a demon say shame to you? Shame. <laughs> say, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? But you will be listed among who the devil knows after tonight. <laughs> so, the Bible says Moses went in, did as the Lord has commanded him in verse 10. Verse 10, keep going, verse 10. 
And Aaron cast down the rod before his servant, and he became what? A serpent. Next verse. And Pharaoh called his wise men and sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt, and they did like in like manner with their enchantment. Next verse. And for they cast down every man his rod, and they became what? But what happened? Your rod will swallow the rod of the enemy. I say your rod will swallow the rod of the enemy. Everybody fighting your life, your rod will swallow their life. Say amen like you are serious. He swallowed it. That's how it's supposed to be. We can't be running from demons. Uh -uh. This thing of people, Tokoloshi is visiting me. Those days are over. When you see a Tokoloshi, say, hey, what are you, how did you even get here? You should be bold. Somebody say, be bold. You can't be hearing all this kind of message and you don't have boldness. No. Tokoloshi. But, you, how did you even get here? Satan, you are not scared. That's what I asked the devil. I said, you have the audacity to come into my office. He knew that this one. I, even the way I said it. He went, oh. <laughs> I said, so Satan, you had the air phone tree. You walked into my office. I said, in the name of Jesus, get out of here. Bah, hit the floor. The demon left. She woke up and said, I feel better. I feel lighter. I said, yeah, you had to. You were carrying heavy load. You were carrying, carrying trucks. <laughs> Amen, somebody. May you feel lighter after the service. Any demon that came with you to this service, they are banished right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Man, let's keep going. Let's go to the next one. Exodus 7 verse 15. Exodus 7 and verse 15. Somebody shout, men like Moses. Say it like you are serious, men like Moses. Verse 15 of Exodus. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goeth out to the waters. Thou shalt stand by the river brink. Against he come. And the rod which was turned into serpent, thou shalt take in your hand. Next verse. And thou shalt say unto him, the Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me unto thee, saying, let my people go that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, he that thou wouldest not hear. Next verse. Thus saith the Lord, in this shalt thou know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite the rod with the rod that which is my, in my hand, the waters which are in the rivers, and they shall be turned to blood. They shall be turned to what? To blood. Next verse. They shall be turned to what? To blood. It was, and all the fish, everything in the river. That church, can you imagine having this type of power? Where you can speak to a river or touch, touch a river, it turns into blood in the front of the president. Believe me, they will listen to us. <laughs> uh, they haven't seen anything. The reason they are despising the church is because they are not men like Moses. Imagine. You just walk to President Cyril and say, hey, if you don't sort out this ESCOM problem in 24 hours, I remove you from the office. Hey. And then in 24 hours, he's out. You think the next president won't listen? Oh, okay. Uh, all the ANC people didn't say amen. All right, no problem. Let me, let me move on. All right. <laughs> Look at verse 19. Verse 19, come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, stretch it out now upon the waters, and upon their streams, upon the rivers, and upon the ponds, upon the pool of water, that they may become blood, and the, that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, in vessels of wood, in vessels of stone. So even the vessels inside, the cups inside Pharaoh's kitchen, if there was water, it turned to blood. And Moses was by the river. <laughs> Jesus. The water in the river is turning blood. The river, water in Pharaoh's cup in the kitchen is turning to blood. May God raise you as a Moses. Yeah. Say amen like you are serious. Yeah. Exodus chapter 8 and verse 1. Exodus 8 and verse 1 and 2. Let's read quickly. We're just going to read Bible. And Moses and Aaron 
Exodus 8 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. Next verse. If thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite thy borders with what? With frogs. Hmm, my goodness. Go to verse 5. Go to verse 5. Quickly. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say, uh, say unto Aaron, Stretch forth thy hand with the rod over the streams and over the rivers, over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up out of the land. Oh, Jesus. Verse 6. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt. What happened? Come on, talk to me. Go to Exodus chapter 8 and verse 16. Exodus 8 and verse 16. Quickly. Exodus 8 and verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod, smite the dust of the land, that it may become what? Lice. Use the rod to hit the ground, and lice will fool everywhere. Lice. Look at this, just look at what God is doing with one man. You know, when I read all this today, I say, Lord, even me, I pray the prayer. I say, Father, raise me like Moses. I no, this nation, we need men like Moses. Hi, no. We sure do need men like that. In this corrupt world, we need men who will look politicians in the face and say, you don't change your ways, you are dead in 24 hours. We need men like that. We need men that will correct the mess that's going on in our nation. Are we together, church? We need to get in away with too many things. Too many. Right now, our election is coming up. Nobody knows where we are going. People are not sure anymore. Nobody knows. We don't even know who to vote for. We are not sure. We are not sure. Because we don't know who is going to come in there. Because all these people do is they make promises and never keep them. We are not sure. Everybody is in limbo. People are not sure. Don't mind all those gatherings that they are going to. People are gathering in thousands. On election day, you'll be surprised. Many of them will not come out of the house. Uh-uh, you are not hearing me. <laughs> People are uncertain about what is going on. But we need men like Moses. We need men like Moses. Exodus chapter 8 and verse 20 to 24. Exodus 8 verse 20 to 24. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh to the waters. Say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. Keep going. Else, if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarm of flies upon thee and upon thy servants and upon thy people and in thy house and the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of what? Swarm of what? Flies. And also the ground wherein you step upon. My goodness. Keep going. Next verse. And I will severe in that day the land of Goshen. Somebody say, God will set me apart. Oh, what is happening in the world should not happen to you. I say, what is killing the world should not kill you. You are a child of God, beloved. You are a child of God. It means something to be a child of God. And that's why when we call for prayer, you show up. Learn to pray. Church, listen. You know, when we, let, let me, Lord, should I go there? You know, when we speak in tongues, you know, Ora Robots University, recently they did, uh, some professors in Ora Robots did some, uh, um, what do they call it? Study. And they found out that praying in tongues does something in your body. That when you pray in tongues, you develop things that fight sicknesses and it quickens your brain that people that pray in tongues are very intelligent people if you are the kind of person that prays in tongues for long let me tell you you there is no it's impossible for you not to scatter what satan is doing after praying in tongues for three hours Be, believe me you see there is nothing satan can do to a man that can stand and pray in tongues hour every day never because whatever he has plotted, when you pray in tongues, the Holy Ghost scatters it. Yeah. Are you here, church? Yeah. Then you now know why the Bible says, building up yourself 
on your most holy faith. If you read that version in the Amplified, he says, build yourself like an edifice, higher and higher, by praying in the Holy Ghost. That means when you are praying in tongues, you are building. Somebody say, I'm building. So don't, don't joke with, it's, it's an advantage to be a Christian. It's an advantage. Look at what he said in Romans 8.26. He says, the spirit helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. And he that searcheth the heart knows what is in the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we now know that how many things? Come on, talk to me. As you are praying in tongues, all things are working together. Are you here, church? Instructions work together. They work together for those that pray in the Holy Ghost. The Spirit helpeth our infirmities. That word infirmities is not sickness. It's the Spirit helpeth our weaknesses, our shortcomings. For we know not. When you pray in English, you are limited. So you pray in English and you pray in tongues. The Bible says when you are praying in tongues, the Holy Ghost is taking your tongues and also interceding for you before God. Believers have two intercessors. The Bible says Jesus ever lived to intercede for us in heaven. Now, the Holy Ghost, when he came on earth, one of the names given to the Holy Ghost, when he says, I will send you the comforter, I will send you your advocate, an intercessor. So you have two intercessors praying with you when you pray in tongues. Jesus is praying. Why you are praying, the Holy Ghost is praying. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Please take your prayer life seriously. Stop blaming us. Hell, they are all prospering. That's why when I see people talk nonsense, uh, pastors are prospering. If you spend the hours I spend with God, there is no way you'll be broke. Uh -uh, let me talk to this side. If you spend the number of hours I spend praying, you will not be broke. You will hear something that will take you to your wealthy place. Some of us wake up, by the time we finish three hours, four hours tongue, we have heard news from heaven. We know where we are going. We know how the day is going. We know how things will work out. No matter how the devil shows up, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. So it's time for you to rise up. Stop being lazy. Wake up before you go to work. Do an hour in tongues. Pray in the Holy Ghost. As you are going to work, if you finish praying in the house, enter your car. Be playing one song by Nathaniel Bassi and blast in tongues from till you get to work. Even if you are in a bus, blast in tongues. I'm telling you, by the time you know it, you have covered one hour instead of being on social media. While you are on the, in the bus, be praying in the Holy Ghost. You are receiving information. Let me tell you a story. True story. This Nigerian guy came into South Africa. I'm talking somebody that came to my office and told me, he asked me this. I've told you the story before. He came into South Africa. So he rented, they, they had an apartment with a Zimbabwean guy. This Zimbabwean is born again. And every morning, this Zimbabwean guy would pray in tongues for two, three hours, four hours, every morning. And he was unemployed. So, He's not born. This guy that told me this, he's not born again. So he came to my office and says, hey, you know, I'm living with this guy and he is struggling. I'm living with this guy. Every morning he just wake up for hours. He said, but something I noticed, three years down the line, the guy is driving a, three B, a, a seven series BMW. He got a good job. And so he now asked me, what is the ra 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 he's saying? I said, he's speaking in tongues. He said, how do I get it? I said, no, you don't get it. They don't buy it in checkers. You must be born again. <laughs> That's how I led him to Christ. In my office, I'm telling you true story. This is not science fiction. True story in my office, I led that guy to Christ. Because he wanted to ra 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 ra, -ra. You, You're watching somebody ra 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 ra, -ra every morning. Three years later, he's driving a brand new 7 Series BMW. Meanwhile, you have legged these bends. Oh, you didn't catch that. Some people packed Mercedes Benz. Uh -huh. But he had what? Legged 
Amen. <laughs> Where are we? He said, I will severe in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell. No swarm of flies shall be there to the end that thou mayest know that I am the Lord. May God separate you with the evils of this world. Listen, you can thrive in hard times. You can prosper in hard times. As a child of God, please don't join them to complain. I am not like everybody living in South Africa. Never. No. I am not like everybody. I am different. The Lord is with me. Uh -uh, you didn't say amen. I said the Lord is with me. The Lord, say it like you are serious to yourself. Say the Lord is with me. You know one of the things he said to Moses, I will be with you. When he was giving him instruction in Exodus chapter 3 to take, go and meet Pharaoh. He said, I will be with you. My hand shall be upon you. So I cannot be sick the way they are sick. I cannot lack the way they lack. I am different. Somebody shout, I am different. Oh, my God is with me. I am confident of that. When you go in for an interview tomorrow, my God is with me. I say, when you're going for that tender tomorrow, my God is with me. Oh, I am different from others. What killed others cannot kill me. You didn't say amen like you are serious. When other people's business are going down, mine is going up. For when men are cast down, what shall you say? There shall be what? A lifting up for me. For thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory and the lifter up of my head. Do you know that song? For thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. You're my glory and the lifter up of my head. One more time, sing it. For thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me you're my glory and the lifter up of my head do you believe in church i believe god is the lifter up of my head when men are being brought down i am being lifted you are not saying amen to somebody here don't complain about petrol price as petrol price is going up your income is going up I prophesy in the name of Jesus. As the economy is getting worse, your economy is getting better. Don't join them to complain. No, I'm not like them. I'm not like others. Say amen to that. My God will take care of me. My God shall supply. How many of my needs? All of my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I am different. Please live here with that mentality. What killed others cannot kill me. What affected others cannot affect me. Uh -uh, you are not here. I told you guys the story. My mother's, every firstborn in my mother's lineage, everybody died in their early, early, in their 40s. My mother died at 44. And here was I, it was showing up. But I am different. I'm 53 this year. The devil has lost it far back. He lost it. My mother died at 44. He lost it almost, how many years? Nine years ago. Because if I didn't deal with that, if I had died in my 40s, there goes Kion. Are you here? That's why you must crumble every altar that your parents have built, your ancestry has built. Say amen to that. It was T.D. Jakes that said that he... People don't know why his 49th birthday was the biggest party he ever had. He said, you know, they were wondering, but how? 50? The next year, which is 50, he didn't do party. He said, you guys don't understand. Let me tell you my family lineage. Grandfather died 49. This died 49. My brother, 49. Everybody, for, he's watching 49. And then what happens is that at 49, your legs start swelling up. And then by the time they take you to hospital, you're gone. Here is TDJs. He crossed 48. As he's entering 49, his legs started swelling up. And he went into prayer and fasting. And defeated that demon. 
every demon harassing your lineage ends with you today in the name of Jesus Christ. It ends with you today. It ends with you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Your parents were broke, you will not be broke. Your parents were sick, you will not be sick. Your parents struggle through life, you will not struggle. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Church, these are the battles we fight. I may not be able to read everything. Give me Exodus 10 verse... Two. Let me just jump over so many. Exodus 10 verse 21. Exodus 10 verse 21. My God. He said, The Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand towards the heaven, and there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even the darkness which may not be felt. Keep going. My God, goodness. And Moses stretched forth his hand towards heaven, and there was what? What kind of darkness? Are you here? What kind of darkness? Thick darkness in all the land of Egypt. How many days? Now, church, maybe you don't understand the meaning of this. The earth revolves around the sun. Okay? I hope you know that. Those of you who did the... Uh, uh, what science is that now? Geography. So the earth revolves around the sun. That's why when some part of the earth is not on the side of the sun, we are night here. For instance, my wife is in Atlanta, Georgia. Right now, it is around, it should be, this is a, a few minutes past, okay, 20 past 8. They are going to be six hours behind us. Because that part of the world is now facing the sun. Can I hear an amen? amen. Moses, Kabusha. Moses put the earth on hold. <laughs> you don't understand. For there to be darkness for three days, meaning that the earth that is supposed to go around the sun, when he got here, Moses said, stop. Now, somebody say, men like Moses. If, if a man can do that, why? And you, the Bible says, of all born of women, Kabaya, of all. He said there is none as great as John the Baptist. Matthew 11, 11. He said, but he that is least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. That means the person that gives his life to Christ today is far higher than Moses. Far higher than Elijah. Far higher than John the Baptist. And then we carry in that level of grace. Somebody shall men like Moses. Say it like you are serious. Men like Moses. You know, my wife called me earlier. I said, baby, this is the word God gave me. Men like Moses. I don't even know what to preach. Men like Moses. And I entered the Bible. You know, because we, we can navigate scriptures. Aya, somebody, you must know the Bible. Though. Know the word for yourself. That's why people like us, we can be harassed. We cannot be harassed by Satan. Why? Too much light. Too much, too much what? Light. There is excess light. Because as long as there is light, darkness, this room now, before you came in here, I came into this auditorium earlier, it was dark. Pitch black. Before they set up. But as soon as light came, darkness went outside. That's how it is in your life. When light shows up, the darkness of poverty will go. The darkness of sickness will go. Can I hear an amen, somebody? That's how it is. Light, revelation, rema, arise and shine. Why? Your light has come. Say, and the glory of God is risen upon you. Because what light does is that it brings glory on your life. Many people are ikabo. The glory is departed. But when you have light, illumination, ah, you light up your environment. <laughs> you know, when you carry light, when you show up, every, you know, light makes you younger. I'm telling you, there is nobody I have, I'm not, I don't want to praise myself, but there is nobody I've told I'm 53, they say you look your age. Never. With light, you go younger. Some of you are, you know, I called Pastor Colin. No, Pastor Colin called me this morning. 
He said, Madala, I say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> he was here this morning. He just called me. He said, Madala. I said, hey, who are you talking to? <laughs> Look at your neighbor. Say, we are not Madalas here. How old are you in this church? Come on, talk to me. It's a prophecy. That's why some of you are looking fresher and younger. It's a pro when we say, how old are you? Shout it out. How old are you? See, you will never grow past 16. That means your heart is 16 years old. Your lungs are 16 years old. Your kidney is 16 years old. Your digestive system is 16. Your esophagus is 16 years old. Your bones are 16 years old. Your joints are 16 years old. Your brain is 16 years old. Shout amen, somebody. Ah. Oh. Must keep saying it. That's how you look younger. You come out looking like, you know, the boy looking like a fine boy. Come on now. Was it the guy that sang? Uh, fine boys, we love Jesus. There is a song like that, right? Fine girls, we love Jesus. We are a new generation. God is raising. Fine boys, we love Jesus. Fine girls, we love Jesus. Are you a fine girl that loves Jesus? I said, are you a fine boy that loves Jesus? Yeah. Don't go and be telling them, oh, I'm old. Some of you, this is how you walk to church. <laughs> how old are you? 36. What? You are walking like you are 28 years pregnant. <laughs> My friend. No, no, no. Uh -uh. We are ever young in this house. I say you are ever young in this house. Oh, my God. Just imagine, with all these things that I've read, that we have men like Moses. Just imagine, picture it, that we have men like Moses. You know, God always, God does to you according to your level of understanding. And, and that's why you must go to a church where they teach you the word. If you go all these churches, I, look, I thank God for the prophetic. But, you know, where you go to church and they tell prophecy from morning to night, you are in trouble in that church. You need the word to grow. You need the word. Many of the prophetic churches are past their prophet dependent. I don't, I never want you to depend on me. When you meet the devil tomorrow, what your father did to Satan, you must do to him. Because I taught you the process. I don't want you to depend on me. Every day you must call me. Satan is harassing me. No. You must... You must stand up for you. Know God for yourself. That's why I teach you the word. Because this is how I knew God. I knew it's the same pattern. I knew him through the word. I studied the word. I read Bible to a point. I read Bible. Eh, I, because I didn't. You know, I hated poverty. I hated average life. When I was in my younger age, as I got born again, I was a very bad boy when I was no, a non-believer. When I got born again, I became so serious with God. And I really wanted to know God. I read Bible cover to cover many times. Now it has become the, one of the greatest advantages I have today. Let Satan wake me up. By the time I open my mouth, 300 scriptures has flied out without Bible. Are you here? So God, that's why if you stay a mediocrity, God will operate with, he's a very, you know, God is a gentleman. He's a faithful God. So if you want to operate in mediocrity, he will operate with you like that. If your level of understanding is 10%, he will operate with you like that. But some of us 100% understanding. We want result in every area of our lives. There is no area of my life that Satan must take advantage of. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Are you here, church? Men like Moses. Somebody say men like Moses. Now, let, let me ask you a question. You know, if you honestly look at the way God operates, if you were, if you were God, now look at the time that Moses was raised by God. If you were God, at that time, you needed somebody to save Israel. Who will you choose? 
At that time in Goshen, remember, the children of Israel didn't go to school. Moses was the only one that grew up in the palace, knew the administration of Egypt, knew the laws of Egypt, knew all the diplomacy of Egypt, knew all the things that is happening in Egypt. If you had to choose somebody that will, that will bring out the children of Israel, who will you choose? You choose the one that has the know-how. And that's exactly how God operates with us. Beloved, if God wants to look for billionaires, he will look for somebody who, when the money enters his hand, he will not backslide. Okay, let me talk to this side. Because you see, right now, you have 50,000 and you are sleeping with Sibongile, you are sleeping with Rachel, you are sleeping with Victoria. You are... Then imagine when one billion comes into your hand, what will you do? You sleep with all the whole South Africa. Say amen, somebody. Church, listen. That's why you need to build capacity where you are. Build discipline where you are. Live a disciplined life. Discipline yourself because God trusts you to the degree and the level that you can handle. He said to the children of Israel in, uh, what was that, John 16, 12, just check it for me. He said, I have many things to say to you, but what happened? You cannot bear them now. You cannot bear them when? Now, look for that scripture. And there you go. Everybody read with me, one, two, go. I have yet many things to say to unto you, but you cannot what? So what, does, what is God saying? I will not give you what you can handle. The reason some of you are not hearing God is because you can't handle it. If you hear him, you will disobey. So he will rather not speak to you. But if he knows you will obey, he will speak. If God tells you now, wakes you up and say, give 100,000 tomorrow, you say, Satan, I rebuke you. Satan will never tell you to give 100,000. In fact, Satan will never tell you to give to church. He will rather tell you to go and use it and spend on party and do something stupid. But he will never tell you to give to church. So if you cannot hear God to even pay your tithe, how will God tell you to go and give a hundred thousand? It's not possible. It's not. He that is faithful in what? In little shall be faithful in what? In much. Are you blessed? Look at your neighbor, say men like Moses. Say it like you are serious, men like Moses. I want us to rise up and pray. Two minutes. Lord, raise me as a Moses. Raise me as a man and a woman that will stop the mess in our nation. Raise me. Raise me like you raised Moses. Raise me, Lord. Are you ready to pray that prayer? Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, raise me the same way you raised Moses for the nation of South Africa. Lord, I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, that you will raise me as you have raised Moses. That I will be the change agent and the deliverer of our nation in the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer in two minutes. Masha. Le prados caprahe la barataya. Mande brote ke zobra ke la matalo. Mende fretos kobare ke bredia velare badaya da madadada. Masho tali ke sobra de kalamante bredia. My Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you raise us, raise men like Moses. Men that will shut down demonic forces in this nation. Men that will shut down the mouth of men and women who have decided to, to, to derail this nation from her purpose. My Father, raise men like Moses. My God, raise men, men, men. Men that will speak to the, to the cosmos and cause darkness to stay on the cosmos for days so that the leaders of this nation will listen. My father, men and women that can stand before kings and speak and their words are honored. Jesus raised men like Moses. Father, raise me like a Moses. Raise me, Father, like a Moses in our nation. The same way you raised Moses in Egypt. 
Lord raise Felix Oko as a Moses in South Africa. Kalama kapando ko samia no mosa embrete ke shevele kambreke to seteye. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We receive it, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Lift up your hands to heaven. Heavenly Father, you gave me this word this early hours of this morning. And I've prayed, I've preached your word. And right now I pray for your people. This year you have teamed this year the year of giant strides. Therefore, Lord, we need men like Moses who will command the attention of the kings of this nation. Who will command the attention of the economy of this nation. Father, raise them out of this place tonight. Father, I pray the same way you gave me this word. Let this word begin to raise men and women that are even greater than Moses. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I bless your people with the wisdom, with the mind and the capacity that is required at this level of the miraculous, at this level of operation in the supernatural. Lord, I bless your people with that grace. I bless them with that grace. I bless them with that grace. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We honor you and we say to you, be the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you have an offering while you are standing? Bring out your offering. Let us pray for the offering as we close. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for these offerings in our hands. Thank you for our tithe. Thank you, Lord, for the faithful ones who are generous enough to bring their tithe into your storehouse. This is end of the month. Your people have been faithful. My Father, I pray, Lord, that you stretch forth your hand upon everyone who is a tither. Let this year become the year that those ideas that will change generations to come, come into their lives. Let this year become the year that you will bless them with the kind of blessing they will not have room enough to contain. Father, let this year be that year where all nations shall call them blessed. Where the devourer is rebuked for their sake. Father, let this year be that year where your people will experience the kind of increase, abundance, and prosperity that they've never ever seen in their lives. Father, let such be their portion, even as they obey you and obey your word in Jesus' name. And the church say, Amen. All right, you can drop your offering on the altar and you are dismissed. I look forward to seeing you Saturday morning prayer. Amen. Is it fr Oh, Friday service. Oh, Friday, Friday, Friday. 9 a.m. We have a resurrection or, sorry, we have a, a, a Friday Easter service. Amen. God bless you. 9 a.m. We want to see you.